So the permitting and licensing of hydropower gets sort of a bad rap. Why is it so challenging to license these little projects? It used to be difficult. There's a game changer in 2013 called the Hydropower Regulatory Reform Act. Really streamlined the permitting process on the federal level. What used to take a two-year process, now they claim could be done in two months. Very good. So who are the chief players in this? Uh, who, do we, who do we worry about on the federal level? On a federal level, there's the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, also known as FERC. They're the main uh, regulatory agency that, that handles energy generation and hydropower being one of them. There's also uh, the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation. If, it, if a facility is on a U.S. Bureau of Reclamation facility, then, then the Bureau would be the lead federal agency. So I don't have to go through FERC and the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, I can pick one or the other? That's correct. You can, you can submit an application to either one and it's up to FERC or the Bureau of Reclamation to decide who's the lead agency. Okay, and I also hear about, you know, back east, like the Army Corps of Engineers. Do they have a role to play in hydropower in the West? Certainly. In, in certain situations, they, they have a major role. Uh, specifically, if you're, if you're developing in, in, in the channel of a navigable water in the United States, they have authority over that. Uh, if it's on a irrigation district canal, a lot less regulations from the U.S. Army Corps. Okay, and since this handbook focuses on already developed water infrastructure, the Army Corps of Engineers is much less likely to have a primary role in these type of projects. That's correct. They have what's called a nationwide permit then. It's a little more uh, streamlined and it's a pretty simple process. Let's talk a little bit more about the FERC licensing. So what, what specifically is easier now? Are there exemptions? Are there expedited licenses? What's out there? Yeah, so FERC has kind of three different categories for small hydro. They have a qualifying facility, uh, they have a conduit exemption, and they will have what's called a 10 megawatt exemption. The qualified facility is basically just a registration. If you have a site that fits um, a checklist of ideas, it's gotta be low impact on an existing conduit. The conduit has to be used for other purposes besides hydropower generation. Then it's just a simple notice you submit to FERC and go down the checklist, so to speak, and, and, and then that's the two-month process. A conduit exemption and a 10 megawatt exemption are a little more involved on the permitting pro side. Um, 10 megawatt exemption are for smaller facilities that are exactly that, 10 megawatts or less, and a conduit exemption is a facility on an existing conduit, similar to the registration, but it's more geared toward larger facilities. These federal regulations apply to all small hydro projects, even down to micro hydropower. So even if you have a system designed for say your house, like a 10 kilowatt system, these same agencies would need to be involved? To an extent. Anytime you interconnect with the electric grid, you have to have approval. You know, the larger ones, say above 100 kilowatts, uh, is typically through FERC. If it's like a smaller one, 25 kilowatts or less, then usually the local electric utility handles the regulation side on that, and FERC doesn't need to get involved. Very good. Now, I know it's not just the feds that regulate water. The states certainly have a role to play in this. Who are the primary agencies that are going to be involved in the regulation of a small hydro facility in Wyoming? Yeah, in Wyoming, so every drop of water in Wyoming is owned by the state. The state engineer's office uh, allows users to put that drop of water to a beneficial use. Hydropower is considered a beneficial use, therefore you apply for a water right to use that drop of water. There are also other state agencies that, that will have a regulatory influence on small hydropower. Uh, the Wyoming Department of Environmental Quality would be one, one of them, specifically if you install hydro on say a culinary pipeline or a municipal system. They're going to be interested in protecting the water to the municipality they're going to be, they're going to have a little say. The Wyoming game and fish are also going to be interested in hydropower if you're diverting water out of a stream or a creek and, and drying up or taking, taking a portion out of that reach of stream, out of the stream, and it can affect the aquatic species. They're also going to be concerned about uh, structures in a channel and fish passage. They want to make sure fish can freely move up and down the creek without a, a block in their way. Since the handbook focuses, once again, on existing water infrastructure, these state agencies probably have a lesser role to play than the federal agencies. Is that fair to say? It's fair to say in, in most applications. Um, on on run-of-river type applications where you have a channel and, and a structure in a channel, then, then the game and fish are going to be involved. If it's on an irrigation canal, typically there's not any aquatic species in the canal. 
uh, they're going to have less of an impact on the, on the permitting process. Okay, how about down at the local level? I know Wyoming is sort of a hands-off state oftentimes at the local level, but are there any entities that a potential small hydro project developer should be concerned about? There'll be some county regulations, county building permits, um, and, and city ordinances, that kind of stuff. That's pretty insignificant compared to the other agencies that so regulate hydro. Nothing out of the ordinary compared to a typical construction project, hydro or otherwise. That's correct. Another state agency that's going to have a say is the Wyoming Department of Fire Prevention and Electrical Safety. Typically these involve a plan review um, and, and some inspections once the facility's up and running. They want to make sure the electrical connections are up to snuff and not going to catch fire. So as I look for the take home on the licensing and permitting process, is it that a small hydro project is approachable now, that these can actually be done? It's definitely approachable. There's been great efforts within the last two years to really streamline the permitting process and make it easier for small hydro to be developed and promote the renewable energy. So a project's going to stand on its own technical and financial merits, not on your willingness to do paperwork? Yeah, that's, that's right. You should focus more on the technical side and not the permitting side on, on whether a project's feasible or not.